What's up, YouTube? Brad Hoover from Rancher Us here. All right, so the Eternals hasn't even made it out, and supposedly it's already getting review bombed by people who don't like the LGBTQIA plus representation in the film. Now look, we've all heard this before. Uh, we heard it in the all-female Ghostbusters. Uh, we've heard it with, you know, of course, Ray uh, from the Star Wars sequel trilogy. A lot of times when um, studios realize that films aren't going to be a success, they find some reason why it wasn't a success. And it usually doesn't have to do with the characters not being interesting or the plot being too convoluted or just basic. They usually try to blame it upon the represent, representation that was within uh, the film. And look, anytime that you have gay or lesbian characters on screen or you have a female cast, they're always going to go to that as a reason for why people hated it. When in reality, that is probably 10 out of 1,000 people that have seen it that really have a true problem with that. Uh, I kind of feel like it's just a scapegoat in a lot of ways. But hey, let's give it a benefit of the doubt just for this article's sake here on screen. Right? Let's read a little bit and see kind of what they're talking about. Uh, it says right here, it appears a subset of people have taken issue with this and brought it upon themselves to review bomb the film. The direct reports that IMDb's ratings for Eternals was flooded with negative reviews a week before the film's theatrical release, with over 400 one-star reviews. A common point of criticism among those leaving negative reviews is the inclusion of a gay kiss uh, in the film's LGBTQIA plus representation. IMDb has since removed the audience rating section of Eternals until after the film's theatrical release when an audience has actually seen it look they did the early uh, they did the early um, theatrical release uh, you know where the critics some critics could come and actually see this uh, film now I read a lot of, of critic scores uh, what they've said about this movie uh, the ones that even liked it said it was kind of basic said it, the characters kind of had um, similar abilities to more popular characters, more established characters, therefore making uh, them kind of feel like they were generic in a lot of different ways. Um, it had a star-studded cast, but it, they weren't really able to kind of make the movie their own. Uh, I heard a lot about that with Selma Hayek, um, that, you know, she wasn't able to play her normal kind of characters that she plays, you know, with that quirky kind of attitude, uh, that she was kind of just bland and wasn't shown enough in it. Um, that's from the people that liked the film. Now, the people that hated the film said mostly along the same things, that it was generic, uh, that it was boring, that uh, it was unneeded in a lot of different ways, that they couldn't feel... Um, uh, they couldn't feel anything for the characters um, and that the plot was overly convoluted um, that's what I read I don't know if I read anything that said uh, any negative review that ever said anything about LGBTQIA plus representation uh, at all uh, like, I mean I feel like I feel like there was so many other things that people were complaining about that that wasn't even uh, something that was even mentioned, or at least not that I read uh, in any of those. So I kind of feel like, look, there's always going to be trolls. There's always going to be uh, people that are going to hate on a film. And just like it goes on to state uh, down here when it comes to Star Wars The Last Jedi and then the all-female Ghostbusters, um, there is a, and of course, uh, uh, Kevin Smith's Masters of the Universe, a revelation. Now, think about what all of those have in common. They were, uh, Captain Marvel uh, was, a, was a success, and I would say the Star Wars sequel trilogy was a success. But um, 
mostly they're viewed negatively uh, simply because um, look if it wasn't Star Wars uh, The Last Jedi would have been considered one of the most worst movies of all time I personally do consider it as a Star Wars fan one of the worst not just Star Wars movie but one of the worst films I've ever sat through in my entire life it, it was incredibly boring from beginning to end none of the story made sense uh, a lot of the characters felt unneeded uh, in, in that film uh, changed a lot of the canon uh, that that um, uh, that was already set in Star Wars over the last 40 years um, so yeah there was a lot of reasons why people hated that movie and they hated the sequel trilogy uh, and it wasn't because Ray Skywalker was or I hate even saying it Ray Skywalker but it wasn't that Ray was the main character it was that Ray was one dimensional she didn't add anything she was boring we didn't feel interested in her uh uh, in her plot we didn't feel interested in her character journey uh, she was just a very one-dimensional character it wasn't because she was a female um, and then you take the all-female Ghostbusters that was just complete and total garbage all the way around uh, that was just not a good film I don't think you're gonna find very many people that say that that was a good film they might take up for the film simply because they feel like you know woke stuff is is needed in in cinema and that it represented the right people but uh overall it was a terrible film it was just a terrible film kevin smith's masters of the universe revelation is another one kevin smith lied and made uh pissed off a lot of fans so it doesn't shock me that that was review bombed by any stretch of imagination but that would have been review bombed even if people saw it because that was just bad it was bad it never should have been made in the very first place it was terrible it was terrible all the way around they have a he-man uh, that doesn't even hardly show up uh, so I mean at the end of the day there's a lot of reasons why those films uh, and those series were uh, poorly reviewed and it is not because uh, people hate the representation uh, within it. It was because it's bad filmmaking. It's bad storytelling. I kind of feel like this is the route that the Eternals is going down, and it don't sound good for it, which kind of sucks. Um, you know, a few months ago, this was a film that I was really psyched for. Uh, the more I saw of it, though, the less I was interested in it. And then, of course, some of the supposed plot uh, got leaked and it just sounded bad it just sounded bad uh, there was really nothing in any of the uh, uh, trailers that made me more interested into it it seems like a lot of what a lot of people that did see it uh, were complaining about too many characters bland story um, and really just not fitting into the MCU as a whole but you know what they're gonna if this if if this is one of the worst MCU films, they're going to make it because of the LGBTQIA plus representation. They're just going to, uh, which I think is kind of sad in a lot of ways. Cause look, if a film is no good, a film is no good. You just gotta own it, you gotta own it, and not do it again. People people respect that. They don't respect. Um, excuses excuses for bad films uh, and for bad series um, and I feel like too often uh, that is an escape goat uh, and it just shouldn't be no one likes that uh, it makes for Hollywood having excuse to continue on doing the same stuff over and over and over again uh, that failed with fans but they say well fans suck because they don't like the representation of it, even though that's probably one of the least things that they hated about it. But anyways, guys, let me know what y'all think. Do you believe that the Eternals is really getting review bombed? Uh, do you believe that it has to do with the LGBTQIA plus representation? Or do you believe that this is just uh, an attempt by Marvel 
to making excuse for a poorly made movie that no one was really asking for in the first place. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and y'all take care.